RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents Transcribe, the Phil Harris Alice Fay Show. <laughs> For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. Most married men like to have a night out with the boys. Sometimes it can be a lot of fun, but other times it can be, uh, but more about that later. First, a word from RCA Victor. This Christmas, give the gift of year-round fun. Surprise that special person with RCA Victor's stunning new super personal portable radio. It makes a great Christmas gift for anyone, and for three mighty good reasons. It's handy, it plays longer, and it's top value. This new RCA Victor set is the handiest portable radio ever, because it's no bigger than an average size book, and so lightweight you can take it anywhere with ease. It plays longer, ten times longer than previous small portables, thanks to new RCA Balance Life batteries. And its new battery lifesaver switch can add even more playing hours by letting the batteries loaf. And RCA Victor's tiny super personal portable radio is way ahead in value, too. It's trim and smartly styled. Comes in a choice of six rich colors. And it's priced at only $29.95 plus batteries, slightly higher in the far west and south. And here's something to remember. According to reports, one gift our GIs in Korea would like to receive is a portable radio. And the super personal portable will be a happy choice because it's so tiny, so long playing. If you do decide to send your GI this RCA Victor super personal portable, remember, he probably can't buy batteries. So send a few extra batteries, too. And now the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Faye and Phil Harris. Yeah. Last night, Elliot Lewis threw his annual poker game and lick your own wounds party. <laughs> it was held at his apartment and Phil was the guest of honor. It was quite a night. And now as we look in on the Harris home, it is noon the next day. Phil is still in bed and Elliot has come over to see how he's feeling. Good morning, Curly. Come on, get up. I got a new bebop story for you. <laughs> hey, this is real crazy, man. Seems these two cats were standing on the no, street. Oh, not Go now, ahead. Elliot. No, no. What? Please, Elliot, not now. My head feels like a Spike Jones rehearsal hall. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you enjoyed yourself last night. You have a good time? I wouldn't know. <laughs> oh, Elliot, what happened? Nothing happened. Came over to my house for a poker game. Oh, yeah, yeah. There was some kind of a disaster, wasn't there? <laughs> oh. Don't you remember? You walked into the apartment, sat down at the table, said hello to the boys. Yeah, I remember that part. Then you bought some chips and Sammy started a deal. I remember that. Then I made you a drink, you started to drink. That's it! <laughs> That's when the super chief came through your living room and smacked me right in the kiss. <laughs> oh, Elliot, I don't remember a thing after that. I can't understand it, Curly. All you had was one little sip and you can't recall a thing. With the liquor you served, that's possible. <laughs> what were you serving, bonded amnesia? <laughs> don't be snide. I served very good bourbon. Nobody ever got hurt drinking Old Vulture. <laughs> That's a splendid name for it, Old Vulture. One drink and you start circling. <laughs> oh, Curly, you must be getting old. You had one sip and you can't remember what happened. Can you remember what happened? No. <laughs> but I had two sips. <laughs> Why don't you get up and get dressed and we'll go... Elliot! Huh? Elliot, open the door. I have a lunch tray for Phil. Uh-oh, that's Alice. Look, Elliot, don't say nothing about the poker game last night. I didn't tell her about it. What did you tell her? I didn't tell her anything yet, but if she asks me, I'm going to say I went someplace else instead. 
And if she asks you, tell her the same thing. Yeah, okay. Coming, Alice. There you are, Alice. Oh, good morning, Phil. About time you woke up. I brought you some lunch. What? Oh, thanks, honey. I, I, I'm not hungry. I, I don't feel so good. Well, you felt all right when you left the house with Elliot last night. Elliot, where did you two go? We went someplace else instead. <laughs> Instead of the poker game, we didn't go to. <laughs> Bill Harris, was there a poker game last night? I imagine there was one someplace. <laughs> but we didn't go there because instead, we went someplace else. <laughs> instead? I already said that. I slipped it in the middle. You're confusing me. Bill. Bill, did you have anything to drink last night? Who? Me? <laughs> Perish the thought. Then why don't you feel good? Well, I, I think I have a bad chest cold. Well, I haven't heard you coughing. Well, you haven't been paying attention. <laughs> I've been coughing like mad all morning. Every five minutes I have a spasm and oops, here it comes again. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, Bill. Bill, that... That cough sounds terrible. I'd like to see you do better without a rehearsal. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, you mean that I, I got a bad cold? Yes, I have, dear. My poor chest is just killing me. <clears throat> I'll get you something for your chest, Phil, and you'll be all right in no time. Will you tell me something, Elliot? Yeah? I don't remember much about last night. Now, just what did we do? Well, as I remember, we were playing poker, and then you started to sing. I did? Well, now, wasn't that nice of me? <laughs> hey, what'd I sing? A uh, tune, uh, well, it's something like this. Uh, a piece of pudding tray, a piece of pudding tray, a piece of pudding tray. Hold it, hold it. Will you hold it a minute? <laughs> You're ruining one of my latest RCA Victor records. <laughs> Look, you better let me do it, All huh? All right. Piece of pudding, piece of pudding, piece of pudding hot, piece of pudding hot, piece of pudding cold, piece of pudding in the pot, just nine days old. Well, the patty cake, the patty cake, the bagels, man, put it in the oven just as fast as you can. Some like it hot and some like it cold, but I like it in the pot nine days old. Piece of pudding hot. Piece of pudding cold, piece of pudding in the pot, just nine days old. Didn't care much about going to school, it was all work and no play. But when I came home about half past three, I'd love to hear my mama say, Here's a piece of pudding hot, hot pudding, piece of pudding cold, cold pudding, piece of pudding in the pot, hot pudding, just nine days old. Nine days old. Steak all juicy and brown But I looked on my plate And here's all I found Just a piece, piece of pudding hot Piece of pudding cold Piece of pudding in the pot Just nine days old I don't want ham I don't want greens There's only one dish that pops my seams It's a piece of pudding hot You got the hot pot pudding Piece of pudding cold The coldy coldy pudding Piece of pudding in the pot The pot pot pudding Just nine days old Just nine days old Mama said, son, here's 15 cents Go watch that elephant jump the fence He jumped so high, he started to fly We didn't get back till the 4th of July Piece of pudding hot You got the put, put, put it Piece of pudding cold Oh, the cold, cold put it Piece of pudding in the pot The pot, pot pudding Just nine days old Nine days old Hot, hot pudding Cold, cold pudding Hot, hot pudding
Charlie, that's just the way you sang that song last night. I did? Then what happened? My landlady threw us out of the apartment. <laughs> Don't like Beethoven, huh? <laughs> hey, Elliot, then what did we do? Well, it, it's all kind of hazy, but I think we went downtown to a tattoo parlor. <laughs> what was that for? I don't know I had some wild idea About having my girlfriend Emma's name Tattooed on my chest <laughs> <laughs> you, you didn't do it, did you? Well, of course not <laughs> I wouldn't I didn't Or did I? <laughs> Curly, I'm gonna open my shirt Tell me quick, is Emma there? Let me see. Nah. You sure there's nothing on my chest? Well, nothing except a little patch of green hair. <laughs> I gotta stop wearing those chlorophyll undershirts. <laughs> oh, thank goodness it ain't there, huh? It's funny, though. I could have sworn I saw that artist tattoo Emma's name on somebody's chest. <laughs> well, it's possible. Who else was with you? Just you. Well, if I was the only one with you... It... <laughs> Elliot. <coughs> Sir? I'm going to open my pajama top. <laughs> And I'm going to look down slowly. <laughs> and if I see any embroidery work <laughs> on my lily white body, <laughs> how? <laughs> Don't bother looking, Curly. It's there. Huh? <laughs> Emma. In Old English Scroll. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Your girlfriend's name is on my chest? Now, how am I going to explain that to Alice? Never mind Alice. How am I going to explain it to Emma? <laughs> how did her name get on my chest? Just let me think a minute. Well, thank It seems to me that when we went into the tattoo parlor... I insisted on seeing a sample of his writing before I'd let him touch me. So? So he must have used you for a scratch pad. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to kill you. Don't blame me. It was an accident. Oh, Ellie, what are you talking about, an accident? Now, can't you see what trouble I'm in? I've got to think of some way to get this tattoo off of my chest before Alice sees yeah, it. You better think of something fast. I hear her coming. Oh, no. Now, what am I going to well, do? Quick, put your pajama tops on, get back in bed, cover up so she won't see it. Okay. Right. Tattooed at my age. <laughs> I wouldn't mind if it was a nice battleship, you know, the <laughs> molars. Look, Elliot, eventually Alice is going to see this tattoo. Now, how am I going to explain Emma to her? Well, there must be some... W wait, wait a minute. <laughs> I've been stupid. There's a simple solution. Tell your wife you had the tattoo put on for her. But her name is Alice. Get her to change it to Emma. <laughs> <laughs> I got news for you. Hmm? You're still stupid. I think it's worth a try, and I... Well, Phil. Phil, how do you feel now? He's much better, Emma. Emma? <laughs> My name is Alice. I've been meaning to talk to you about that. You know, you're much too glamorous to have a plain name like Alice. A girl of your beauty should have a name that has allure, mystery, fire. True. I could change it to Lana. Or Emma. Or Rita. Or Emma. Or Ava. Or, yeah, I like that one. <laughs> of course, Ava isn't the name I had on my mind. It ain't the one I got on my chest, <laughs> Honey, nothing. It would not. I'm. I, I, I'm a little delirious, honey. That. Well, my cold is much worse. Well, I'll fix that in a minute. I'll put this hot mustard plaster on your chest. My chest? <laughs> no, oh, no, honey. That ain't going to do any good. You see? Well, uh, you can't. Uh, honey, the cold just slipped down to my stomach. <laughs> All right, boys. Phil, I don't think there's anything wrong with your chest. I think it's your head. That's no way to talk to a sick man. <laughs> 
Oh, now, look. <laughs> if you're sick, let me put this mustard plaster on your chest. Honey, I don't need medicine. If you want to make me feel better, uh, uh... Oh, go downstairs and put some records on the Vic Trolley. You know, the music always soothes me. Well, if it's music you want, I'll stay here and sing for you. But... But can't you do it from downstairs or, or up on the roof or... Oh, 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 better yet, go over to your mother's house and phone it in. I'm gonna sing right here. No two people have ever been so in love, been so in love, been so in love. No two people have ever been so in love as my lovely dove and I. No two people have ever moon such a moon, June such a June, spoon such a spoon. No two people have ever been so in tune as my macaroon and I. And when we kiss, and when we kiss, and when we kiss, well, it's like this. Well, it's historical. It's hysterical. Let me tell. Well, certainly, darling. No two people have ever been so in love, been so in love. Been so in love No two people have ever been so in love As my lovely dove and I Never before and never again Could never anything be more romantic and again. No two people have ever been so in love Been so in love Been so in love, been so in love. Been so in love. It's incredible no two people have ever been so in love so as my lovely dove and, and this is unique, the positive peak, oh, we are the most unusual couple on earth. No two people have ever moon such a moon, moon such a moon, June, such a June, such a June, such a June. June such a what he means is that no two people have ever been so in tune, been so as my macaroon and I. And when we kiss, when we kiss, and when we kiss, well, it's like this, well, it's it's historical, it's hysterical. Let me tell Well, you. certainly, darling. No two people have ever been so in love. Been so in love. Been so in love. Been so in love. So in love. So in it's love. impossible. No two people have ever been so in love. Been so as my lovely dove. And this is the dream, the very extreme, the sort of a dream you couldn't well, imagine. Anyway, no two people have ever been so in love. Been so as my lovely dove. And I... Well, honey, how do you feel now? Oh, honey, I'm sicker than ever. <laughs> look, you'd better leave the room before you get what I got. Well, what have you got? I can't say, but it wouldn't look good on you. <laughs> now, please go, will you, honey? Very well. If you're trying to get rid of me, I'll go. I wonder what's wrong with him. He's acting awfully peculiar. I'd better call the doctor and have him come over and examine him. Gee, I hope it's nothing serious. Anybody home? I brought the groceries. Oh, hello, Miss Faye. Say, you look upset. What's the matter? Oh, I'm having trouble with Mr. Harris. Oh? And what's wrong with the jerky Cherokee today? Julius, <laughs> he's, he's sick in bed. He is? <laughs> Tell me, does he have much pain? No, no, he doesn't have any pain at all. Can't we fly some in? <laughs> <laughs> well, if Mr. Harris is sick, I guess I ought to go in and see him. Where is he? Oh, he's in the bedroom with Mr. Lewis. And uh, you go on in, because I'm going to go call the doctor. See if you can get one who just lost his license. <laughs> I bet that big baboon ain't sick. He must be faking. He and Mr. Lewis are probably up to something. I think I'll sneak up to the door and listen. Curly, it's not gonna do you any good to lie here and pretend you're sick. Uh-huh. My suspicions have been confirmed. Oh, maybe you're right, Elliot Maybe you ought to try and sneak out Because if Alice ever comes in here and sees Emma I'm dead Emma? He's got a dame in there <laughs> Curly, sneaking out won't do any good Sooner or later, Alice will find out What you gotta do is get rid of Emma 
I can't get rid of her. She's part of me. <laughs> oh, that nasty old man. <laughs> Must be some way of getting rid of her. How can I? I've got her under my skin. With his loose skin, that's possible. <laughs> Elliot, look, there must be something that I can do. I can't stand having Emma on my chest. She's standing on his chest? <laughs> this I gotta see. Mr. Harris, why is that woman standing on, on... All right, fellas, where's Emma? I know there's a woman in here. There ain't no woman in here. Who are you kidding? I heard you say you got him on your... your... Well, ain't that a dainty doily on your chest? <laughs> That's a tattoo. I see. A married man whose wife's name is Alice has Emma tattooed on his chest. Ooh, wait till Miss Faye hears about this. You might have a tough time. Now, wait a minute, kid. Wait a minute. Now, the whole thing was an accident, and I don't want my wife to know. Look, uh, Julius, would uh, $20 close your mouth? I doubt it. I got a pretty big mouth. <laughs> Two 20s might plug the hole. All right, all right. Here's 40 bucks, and you're not to say anything about Emma, understand? Yeah. I promise not to say anything to your wife about Emma in return for which you are to give me $40. Right. Every week. <laughs> Julius. For 20 years. <laughs> Look, kid. With options for renewal. <laughs> Why, you little blackmailer, I like... Curly, Curly, he's got you. All right, all right, so he's got me. Now, look, Julius, I'm going to give you 40 bucks a week. Now, you get out of here. Beat it. I'm going. By the way, Mr. Harris, you better cover up Emma so the doctor don't see her. What doctor? The one your wife called. He's on his way over to examine you. Huh? Well, goodbye, Mr. Harris, Mr. Lewis. And so long, Emma, you little annuity, you. <laughs> hear that, Elliot? A doctor. A mm -hmm. doctor. Now I'm really dead. The first thing the doctor's going to do is examine my chest, and then Alice will see Emma. All right, brain, what do I do now? I got an idea. Alice thought you were acting a little peculiar before. So, so. So, so. If you can put on an act and make the doctor think you're a little balmy, he'll examine your head, not your chest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That would work. There's only one danger. What? You might find something wrong with your head. <laughs> well, that's a chance I'll have to take. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll put on an act that'll really fool that doctor. Yeah, but you gotta be subtle. Just act a little irrational. When uh, you speak, don't make too much sense, but don't overdo it. Bill! Bill, the doctor is here. Oh, goody! Butter him and slide him under the door. <laughs> Well, I was worried about you, so I called the doctor. Uh, Dr. Conrad, this is my husband, Mr. Harris. How do you do, Mr. Harris? Now, what seems to be troubling you? That'll be $10, please. <laughs> Why, there's nothing troubling me. <laughs> That's what they all say. Now, you just sit down and take your shoes off. The blacksmith will be back in a minute. <laughs> This is the doctor. Oh, isn't that splendid? I love doctors. Well, that makes me glad all over. <laughs> now, look, will you please... Do you know that more doctors smoke camels than any other animal? <laughs> Bill, what's the matter with you? You're acting like a crazy two-year-old. You're just saying that to keep me out of the big race today. And I'm the only one who can beat citation. <laughs> Are my oats ready? <laughs> you know, Harris, I think I'll have to put you under observation. I knew it, I knew it. You're just trying to get rid of me. I knew as soon as you walked in with your long blonde curls, you were planning to steal my bald-headed wife. <laughs> Curly, it's the other way around. I know, but it sounds crazier my way. <laughs> Doctor, why do you want to run away with my wife when movies are better than ever? <laughs> Look, Harris Quiet, dear They're playing our song <laughs> uh, 
Well, I think I've heard enough. I'm leaving, Mrs. Harris. Your husband doesn't need a chest specialist. Should I call a psychiatrist? Why waste the money? Just get a couple of squirrels and have them carry him off. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> There he goes, and he didn't even kiss me goodbye. <laughs> oh, well, anyone for channel swimming? <laughs> Curly, he's gone. You can stop. I don't want to stop. I like that kind of talk. This may be the beginning of a new character for me. Now, if you'll hand me my roller skates, I'll be off to all the right, rink. All right, Phil, all right. What's going on? Why didn't you want the doctor to look at your chest? Well, uh... Well, I don't want anybody to see it, honey. It looks awful. It's all discolored. Well, I'm going to see it anyway. I'm going to take those pajama tops off. No, no, please don't touch me. My chest, well, it has a horrible rash, and if you should see it, you Oh, still! Mm. Now, now I'll be able to see what... Phil Harris, what is that name tattooed on your chest? Who is Emma? Emma's my girlfriend. <laughs> doing on Phil's chest? Well, my chest was too small to put it on, so Curly allowed me to use it. <laughs> that's right, honey, that's right. And greater love hath no man than to lend his bosom to a narrow-chested friend. <laughs> and Phil will be back in just a moment. Unless you're an expert, you wouldn't try to repair your own car. You drive it into a garage and have a mechanic do it. Radio and television receivers are even more complex than automobiles. And if they need to be serviced, the job should always be done by expert technicians. Your local radio television serviceman is trained in the adjustment and repair of radios and television sets. He has expensive test equipment to make sure your receiver is restored to its original performance. So always call on your serviceman if your radio or television set needs adjustment. It will cost you less in the long run. And if the picture tube or any one of the receiving tubes needs to be replaced, your serviceman will recommend RCA tubes. They cost no more, and they're your best insurance against failure in your radio or television set. Always insist on RCA tubes. Folks, this is Phil again. Next week, local chapters of the United States Junior Chamber of Commerce and hundreds of cities and towns from coast to coast will begin one of their most important Christmas activities, the J.C. Christmas Shopping Tour for orphans and underprivileged children. There are thousands of these youngsters who have never known the pleasure of giving, and that's just what the J.C. Christmas Shopping Tour offers them, the chance to enjoy this new experience. To find out how this heartwarming program works in your town, how you can participate, listen to your local radio and TV personalities this coming week. They'll tell you all about it. And you can help a lot of swell kids have a brighter Christmas. And it'll make you feel great yourself. So watch for the J.C. Christmas Shopping Tour in your community next week. Thanks, everybody, and good night. Good night, everybody. Included in this program transcribed was Joseph Kearns. The part of Julius was played by Walter Tetley. Last year, RCA Victor made Christmas especially beautiful for millions of Americans with an album of Yuletide songs sung by the Robert Shaw Chorale. And now, RCA Victor brings you Volume 2, Robert Shaw's Christmas Hymns and Carols. In this brand new album, available in all three speeds, the Robert Shaw Chorale sings 26 beautiful but seldom heard Christmas selections. Buy either or both of these wonderful RCA Victor Christmas albums at your record dealers tomorrow. Tonight, hear Theater Guild on the air over NBC.